One of the configurations that need to be made on your Cisco device is a configuration of the clock. This is a brief tutorial on how to do this. You may wonder if setting the clock is important to the device operation. Well, no, it's not. But by configuring the clock, you can benefit from a couple of things, such as log files will display the proper timestamp, which can assist in troubleshooting, and also the correct time allows you to make connections between two different times. Now, the three steps to configuring the clock are setting the time zone, setting the daylight savings time, and then finally configuring the clock. The time zone and daylight savings time need to be configured while in the global configuration mode whereas the clock has to be configured in the privileged mode. The first step is to configure the correct time zone. The reason we do this first is that if you set the time and then configure the time zone you'll have to reset the time again. Not only is it important to know what time zone you're in, you need to know how many hours you are from the Greenwich Mean Time or GMT. For example, if you are in the Central Standard Time Zone in the United States, you are six hours behind GMT. You can indicate this when you are configuring the time with a minus six. If you are unsure as to what the difference is in time between your location and the GMT, there are several sites on the internet that can assist you. After setting the appropriate time zone, you need to configure the router to adjust for daylight savings time. The summertime command tells the device to refer to daylight savings time as central daylight time or CDT which will automatically occur according to a predefined dates and times on the device. The reoccurring option tells the device to use the accepted US daylight savings time rules for the annual time changes in April and October. After configuring the time zone and daylight savings time, the last step is to configure the clock. For this configuration, you need to switch back to the privilege mode. Here are a few things to remember while setting the clock. Use the clock set command. Use 24-hour military time. Include the seconds when you are setting your time. Specify the month with a three-digit or the letter that is abbreviation. And include the year. The format that is needed to be used is as follows. HHMM and SS for the current time the numbers 1 through 31 for the day of the month, the three letter abbreviation for the month, and then the current year. After completing the configuration steps, verify that the clock has been set correctly. To do this, in privilege mode, enter the command show clock. This will bring up the time configured on the device. Now, Don't forget to save your settings. The most Cisco devices don't have an internal clock that stores the time if the power is lost to the equipment. By saving your configuration, the time zone will remain set because the router stores it in its configuration. Let's go ahead and show how the configuration of the clock is actually handled. To configure the clock on our device, we first must get into our global configuration mode. Once there, we will configure the time zone and the daylight savings settings. After we complete that, we will back out into the privilege mode where we will set our actual clock itself. We have now set the clock on our device. To verify the settings are correct, do the command show clock. And as you can see, our clock settings are correct with the current time and date. Don't forget to save your settings, which will actually save the time zone and the summertime settings. This will not actually save the clock itself. If you were to lose power, your clock will have to be reset. doing a copy run start saves those settings for you. The settings have been completed and now you are good to go.